If you have a Mac computer running one of the latest M processors, you have a beast for training machine learning models. You just need to know how to use the GPU. So here in this video, I'm gonna show you how you can enable GPU support for TensorFlow, PyTorch, and JAX. So you can train your models on your computer and take advantage of all of the GPU power that's in here. First of all, let me show you something uh, that I learned recently. Uh, this here is Activity Monitor, okay? An Activity Monitor, like probably you already know about it. So within Activity Monitor, go to Window and then click on GPU History, okay? And this little window that's gonna show here will show you how much GPU is being used on your computer. And this is gonna be helpful because when we test GPU usage, you will see those bars spiking all the way to 100%, okay? So this window here shows, you can imagine like the top, at the top of the window is 100%. So now there is some usage here in the GPU. Uh, that's probably from the operating system. I'm gonna keep this window open. I'm gonna move it uh, somewhere outside of the frame, but we are going to come back to it really quick. So I built uh, a little project to test GPU in PyTorch, TensorFlow, and JAX. And you're gonna find a link to the project somewhere in the description of this video. While you're there, please like this video, just let the algorithm uh, know that this is working for you. So I know to record more videos like this. I'm gonna follow the instructions that I wrote here in a readme file, just to configure everything that we need to take advantage of the GPU, okay? So I'm gonna start by creating a virtual environment. Uh, I'm gonna have, I'm gonna go here to my, my terminal window. I'm inside that project. And I'm gonna start by creating that virtual environment. I'm gonna be using uh, VM, the module VM. I'm gonna call the folder dot VM. Uh, all right, so that should do it. Okay, now I'm gonna activate that virtual environment. So source being activate. Now I'm inside. Now all of the libraries that are in, that I installed right now are going to be installed within that environment. They are not gonna mess up with everything else that I have on my computer. All right, so let me go back to the instructions. Uh, the next thing is just updating PIP to the latest version within that virtual environment. Cool, that is done. Now let's start with PyTorch, okay? So to install PyTorch, the good news is that the latest version uh, you don't have to do anything special to get GPU support. So if I install the latest version of PyTorch, I should get automatic support for M1 Max or M2 or M3 Max. By the way, this is an M3 Max MacBook Pro. Uh, so that's what I'm working on here. All right, so I'm gonna install PyTorch. This is the line. It's gonna install the three libraries that we need. Okay, that's gonna take a second. I'm gonna go down and I'm gonna install TensorFlow. TensorFlow requires special libraries for your Mac. As you can see here, I'm gonna be installing TensorFlow, TensorFlow macOS, and TensorFlow Metal. You have to install those three libraries. So I'm also going to do that. I'm gonna install all of that inside my, my virtual environment. And finally, to run JAX, I need to install JAX Metal, which is specific for the Mac. I need to update JAX or these MLD types to version 0.2.0. I need to install this specific version of JAX and this specific version of JAX lib. Now, if you go to the documentation, I went to the documentation that Apple provides to install JAX, you shouldn't need to do these two, okay? So Apple does not mention that those two are required. So give it a try without those two. In my case, it, is, it does not work. Like if I follow Apple instructions, it just doesn't work. So I got it working by going to those specific libraries here in my M3 uh, Mac. All right, so I'm gonna grab all of that, go to my terminal, and I'm gonna ask it to install all of this. So while that works, I'm gonna open this particular notebook here that you see here. Uh, this notebook is very simple, has three sections. 
So let me open the outline and you can see there are three sections there, PyTorch, TensorFlow, and JAX. So I'm gonna be running the code throughout uh, this just to make sure everything works as expected. Uh, okay, so, all right, this is a conflict, that's okay. Uh, all right, so this is good to go now. Uh, what I have to do is I'm gonna restart this notebook. Oh, I actually need to install the Jupyter kernel in that uh, Python environment. So I'm gonna do that right now. There you go. And I'm gonna start by running this code here. Now, this code is just a simple function that is going to create a tensor using PyTorch. You can see how I'm using the Torch library to create a couple of, actually a couple of tensors. Uh, they are 10,000 by 10,000 matrices, okay? And I'm gonna send those matrices to a specific device. And the idea here is that first, I want to show you how long it takes to do a multiplication using the CPU versus how long it takes using the GPU. So you can see the difference, okay? All right, so a quick check. This is how my GPU is doing so far. So let me execute this line here, okay? So now I'm gonna be creating a device for the CPU. So I'm gonna be sending these matrices to the CPU, creating these, these two tensors in the CPU. And I'm going to multiply X times Y. And I'm gonna time it, okay? So I'm gonna run a bunch of experiments using the time it cell, cell magic. It's gonna take a few seconds to finish. And this is gonna tell me how long it takes to do that multiplication, okay? All right, so let me check on the GPU here. All right, there, is, there doesn't seem to be any activity, anything out of the ordinary on the GPU. Looking at how long it takes, it takes 14.4 uh, milliseconds to do that multiplication. All right, let's do the same thing now, but on the GPU. To access the GPU in, in PyTorch, you can just create an MPS device, okay? And I do not remember, uh, let me go here really quick, MPS Apple Silicon, because I do not remember what MPS stands for. It's metal something, uh, okay, let me see. MPS, all right, it's metal performance shaders. That's what MPS means. Okay, good to know, awesome. So I'm gonna create the two matrices now, but I'm gonna send them to the M3 GPU, okay? And I'm gonna do the multiplication. And let's take a look at the GPU history here. So it finished, so let's wait, look at the spike here in the GPU. So this little spike here was caused by multiplying those two matrices multiple times. And now multiplying the matrices, it took 3.2 milliseconds. So compare 3.72, sorry, with 14.4 milliseconds. That's how fast the GPU is. All right, so PyTorch is working. Let's do the same experiment with TensorFlow, okay? So I'm gonna be creating the two tensors, the two matrices in TensorFlow now to just run an operation in the CPU I can do this. I can just send it to the CPU column zero device, which is the first CPU that my computer is going to report. Uh, this is still creating the TensorFlow stuff. All right, so I'm gonna do this and let's see how long it takes. It should take about 15 milliseconds. Again, 14, 15, 16 milliseconds around that range. Checking on the history here, look at the spike when I did the PyTorch multiplication. All right, so it's 15.3 milliseconds, again, around the same time that it took PyTorch to do that multiplication. And now I'm going to be using the GPU zero. That's how TensorFlow sees the GPU on my Mac. So I'm gonna be doing the same multiplication on the GPU. And let's see if it works. It's 3.71 milliseconds, extremely fast again. Let's see if we can see a peak here. Look at that peak right there you can see that huge spike from that multiplication. All right, so let's now do JAX. And in this case, JAX works a little bit different. So by default, JAX is gonna use your GPU if it's available. So you have to specify 
that you want to use the, the CPU instead. So the way you do that is through an environment variable. So you set Jax platforms to CPU. So now when I run this, now Jax is going to uh, just use the CPU. It's gonna ignore the, the existence of a GPU. So here is the creation of those tensors. It's the same code, just using Jax. So I'm gonna do that. And now when I run the multiplication, Jax, uh, should run that multiplication in the CPU. So again, it should take 15, 16, 17 milliseconds for that multiplication to finish, uh, telling me that it's, it's very slow, it's running on the CPU. All right, so here it is, it's 18.1 milliseconds to do that multiplication on the CPU. Great, in order to fit to run the, the code on my GPU, I'm going to comment out the environment variable I'm gonna restart my notebook. So it sort of like starts from, from scratch. I'm gonna import uh, and create the tensors here. And now you can see that Jax is giving me a ton of information and it's indicating to me that it's going to start using that GPU, which is awesome. Jax, Apple GPU support, it's experimental. Sure, I understand. Let's do the multiplication now. Boom, 3.2 milliseconds, and we should get in the history, if we wait just a couple seconds, we should get that huge spike right there. So this is to show how you can take advantage of that GPU, again, using any of the common deep, le la deep learning libraries that are out there. Uh, take a look at this code, prepare your environment, and you're good to go. I hope you enjoy your MGPU. Bye-bye.